Welcome to an episode of Orchids in the Dark. Very obvious to already see who is in the viewfinder and kickstarting off our Orchids in the Dark is van der Falkata. The list of ingredients that you need to draw upon for the nocturnal fragrance of this gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> little vanda are vanilla sugar, but add to that the seedless fresh vanilla pod and the fragrance of the external part of the vanilla pod that doesn't have that sugary note to it. If you have ever smelled a fresh vanilla pod, it doesn't really, <clears throat> you know, it's not very, very pleasant. But then when you add sugar to it, like a vanilla sugar, suddenly the vanilla starts to be much more enhanced. Now, the reason I'm saying vanilla sugar and the fresh vanilla pod without the seeds is because there is initially that musty fragrance of the exterior of that fresh vanilla pod, which is not as pleasant until you continue with the fragrance as it gets deeper and the vanilla sugar comes out and suddenly all of that combined gives you the fragrance of the Vanda Falcata. It is very, very strong. With all the nocturnally fragrant orchids I currently have in my blooming alley, two of them are super intense, and that is my Coilostylus parkinsoniana and this Vanda Falcata. The two of them are competing but not in an unpleasant way. They do not clash. One provides a heady note of the vanilla sugar and the other one comes in with citrus. It's just incredible, considering the fact that the further away you step from the orchid, the more of the vanilla sugar you have, the closer you get in and smell the blooms up close, the more of the vanilla seed pod fragrance you have. So enjoy Van der Falcata from a distance in all its fragrant glory. And once you've taken in enough of that hit, move a little bit closer because just remarkable. Now that's all about the fragrance and I hope that the blooms in the B-roll were just as pretty as well. I think she's holding up really well under the flash, especially being so, so pristine and white. Gorgeous, and I'm happy to be standing here with you while I am surrounded by her perfume. No complaints at my end. <laughs> Filming nocturnal fragrant blooms is just, you know, <laughs> the icing on the cake here. This is Coilostylus ciliaris. Not exactly a showstopper, not exactly wow factor. I get it, but it's her fragrance that you can't scratch and sniff on the screen. Unfortunately, that is the showstopper and the wow factor. <laughs> she has a very soapy and citrusy fragrance tonight. I've never really recognized the soapy side of her fragrance, but hey, it's not unpleasant. It's something that I would have in my guest bathroom if somebody were to come to visit to wash their hands with. It's very pleasant, very delicate, very elegant. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. First time I pick up on the soap though. What I do love about these blooms, not just because they are my favorite color combination of all time, their subdued elegance, but it is that frilly shredded lip. I mean, how does that not make sense? These blooms, the star shape, the proportions, and then a frilly lip. I mean, it's like decorating a wedding cake with that last little touch of whipped cream, that last icing rose where you think, well, no, nah, you don't want to overdo it. Keep it simple. And then the baker puts that last little touch on that wedding cake and boom, you're like going, oh my word, that just lifted the whole visual and changed the proportion and the beauty of the final product. That's what I see in these blooms. Very, very beautiful. And the sepals in the back, they also have like a pink stripe, which also transfers onto the cabalgata in verde. But no, this is beautiful. Coilo stylus ciliaris. You know, sometimes for blooms like these, it's all about attracting pollinators. Subdued, simple elegance is their style. Nothing flashy, pardon the pun, <laughs> as we are dealing with a flash, but no, nothing flashy. The emphasis here is on simple, classic elegance. I love them. Let's give this one a go. By contrast, we've got Coilostylus ciliaris variety or stedii. Yeah. 
You see beautiful bloom shape as well. Very, very obvious this is a coilus stylus because of how the column protrudes out. We've got that split lip again, but it is not as magnificent looking in the detail as the ciliaris proper. This one, I am really, really trying hard to get the tissue effect that I can see under the flash of the lip to get that effect onto the camera. Very, very difficult. The texture of these blooms is also waxy and sturdy, but the lip itself is very delicate. It's really like a tissue and it has the wrinkles of a tissue. I'm trying to pick that up, but I am not very successful. It almost has the same kind of structure, lip veining that we saw in the Brassavola tuberculata in a past video. That similar effect, but of course, much, much smaller surface area. So quite difficult. Not as impressive as the Coilus stylus ciliaris proper, but I wanted to show them nonetheless in case someone was curious. So many blooms vying for attention. <laughs> My Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia under the flash and well, what a shame, what a shame. Now, I'm not saying what a shame because this isn't a beautiful image. I love it, even though the blooms are coming off as white, which is the first part of the shame. The second part of the shame is that in actual fact, the natural eye is seeing a spectacle of chartreuse, pale, baby, baby green sepals and petals, and each and every one of them is sparkling. So the naked eye has so much more visually to appreciate than the camera has. Even going in, getting in closer, I am trying to move the camera, roll the flash a little bit over all the different structures of the blooms as I work my way around each and every spike. And I'm trying to find that real reflection as well as the color. I am not very successful to it until possibly the end of the B-roll clip where I somewhat manage with my hand to tease out a little bit of the sparkle. But based on what I'm seeing with the naked eye, yeah, uh, the b-roll footage doesn't really match so i love the bud stage even that is the sparkling one and i don't see the sparkle during the day so that's new for me here i wish you could see what i am actually seeing and i'm really really sorry that here i am gushing about what i'm seeing <laughs> and i can't really show it to you but i do love how all these blooms are like little human beings standing to attention floating around in midair it makes them look like they're in their gym jams the way i am <laughs> yes i'm filming in my pajamas <laughs> So we're wearing the same attire, <laughs> but they do look really, really cute. I will not dispute that. I love the detail in the lip. That also stands out true to the eye, as true as what I see. But if I could show you what I'm really, really seeing, I think you would understand that. Well, this orchid with these blooms really has a magnificent, magical pixie effect under the flashlight, which it does not have during the day. Not too shabby. This one, bear with me. Bear with me. At the beginning, well, I'm going to insert an image I took without any flash at all, and I'm going to show that to you now. Absolutely incredible what this orchid is picking up from the facade, and of course, a street light that has recently been fixed, making my entire patio much brighter than actually nighttime. Anyway, there goes my stargazing nights. So, this is the image I took of this orchid without a flash. It is incredible. <laughs> When I put the flash on, there you see all the little white structures. It's the lip, it's the column of the blooms. Incredible to get that one shot without a flash. And the blooms did what they did. However, bear with me a little bit more because this orchid has a lot to offer and she is difficult to film, to photograph at the best of times. So I'm searching with my camera to show you some of the details in the lip. The color is true. We are seeing that beautiful spring 
green, chartreuse green. It is vibrant, it is bright, it is exactly what I am seeing. So that's working out great. The pure white, however, is really, really giving me a hard time to find what I want to show you about the lip. Just bear with me while I look for it. And then finally, at least from behind, I can show you how beautifully the lip is structured because photography during the day, muy complicado. At night, clearly with the pristine white, the flash just blows everything out. But once we get to the back of the lip, I have stood a chance and that's what I want to try and show you. And then as I go scooting around the blooms again, finding the right angle, eventually I get to a shot where you will see the little pink highlight and blush on the lip. Now these blooms are by no means remarkable when you look at them individually. They don't really have anything to show for. She's not even fragrant, so what's the point? Well, the point is that the entire spike, the whole thing, the whole visual, that's what makes these blooms pop. Credit to this orchid for producing such a lot of blooms on one spike or else <laughs> she would not really be of that much interest, at least not in my collection. But as she does this with one growth, eventually, hopefully, one day she will mature to do this on two growths and then her entire beauty will come to the forefront. Oh, by the way, this is Epidendrum multiforme crossed with Capricornu. Well, well, well. Ooh, let's <laughs> let's just put the viewfinder out of its misery. Is that a chef's kiss or what? Mwah! This is Dendrobium bensonier. Wow. I <laughs> Let me just catch my breath here. This did I just say clean white pristine perfection? Look at these blooms. For an orchid that I had not ordered, she came to be by mistake. I was supposed to get a replacement for a Dendrobium unicum, and they sent me this one, and I thought, well, that's a vigorous unicum. I was very happy. Turns out when she bloomed for me for the first time in 2021, of course, <laughs> there's nothing unicum about her, but what she has delivered and added to my collection are these gorgeous blooms. They are magical under the flash, and they really, really do reflect all that beautiful crystalline pixie dust along the petals and sepals. Then that lip is so much more detailed as well. Very difficult to be able to see how frilly and shredded it actually is during the day, but under the flash, oh, what a different story. Goodness gracious me, this is gorgeous. Of course, I'm always a little bit concerned when I <laughs> film my blooms at night because I don't see any pests until I put the flash on and then it's like, oh no, really? So I'm always a little bit worried there may be something lurking like a mealybug. But no, she is mealybug free even at night. <gasps> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. My word am I glad that I got this orchid. I would not have ordered this orchid just by the picture on the internet. Not at all. But sometimes when mistakes happen and they turn out like this, incredible. This is astonishing. This is just beautiful. Dendrobium bensonia. Mind blown. I ask your forgiveness for dusty leaves. Today I tried to wipe them off as best as possible without jiggling this beautiful <laughs> Phalaenopsis <laughs> Violacea varietas cerula around in the pot too much. Clearly, you can see where I did not reach because the leaves are so tightly packed one on top of the other and the health of my orchid is a little bit more important than dusting the leaves off even further, risking a little bit too much. But having said that, let's just put that aside. Let's not focus on the leaves. Let us focus on that bloom. I don't know about you, but mind blown. Over here, mind blown, chef's kiss, mwah, all of that business. I think she is beautiful. She has more of a satiny effect on her petals and sepals, 
but that is because the pixie dust is so much more concentrated, it's not as spread out. The color that we see is to a degree true, but if I can point your mind into the direction of the color of the lip as per the camera, is the color of the petals and sepals and the lip is even richer indigo than what we see under the flash but she does sparkle she shines in her own right she is holding on superbly under the glaring blaring light i think that this little bloom really really has a certain majesty about her She's a first-time bloomer in my collection, so of course I'm like a kid with a new toy. I have to discover this bloom, I have to look at it, and her perfume during the day is just knockout. I mean, cinnamon, what can I say, cinnamon toast, more on the cinnamon side. She is intensely fragrant, the spicy side of cinnamon, but not chili spicy as in, no, potent cinnamon fragrance with a note of sugar not the other way around and i am someone who just loves cinnamon so this orchid phew, incredible of course she is not nocturnally fragrant but i can tell you right now i am about eight meters away from a coilostylus parkinsoniana and that fragrance is wafting over here what a night to be out with my Violacea variety cerula and have the fragrance of the coilostylus parkinsoniana from this distance coming my way. It is beautifully citrusly tangy with a note of sugar behind it. My word, if the blooms aren't something to shout about because their perfect simplicity, the fragrance, I am not surprised. She doesn't need to be a flashy bloom. That fragrance coming from my blooming alley is just, well, if I was a pollinator, I would be all over those blooms. But that was a massive tangent, taking a little bit away from our candidate here, the Phalaenopsis violacea. I just had to bring that in there because if I were ever to look at this clip back one day, I want to remember this night. We have a beautiful, beautiful Phalaenopsis species bloom in our viewfinder. And unfortunately, I cannot share the fragrance of my Coilostylus parkinsoniana with you, but it is a magical effect. This bloom is gorgeous and presents herself beautifully. The proportions are just magical. Absolutely adore this little one under the flash and I, wow, let me know in the comments if you agree. <laughs> Spectacle, showstopper, I don't care. It's just out of this world, literally. <laughs> Oh, check this out. <laughs> Excuse me while I collect myself. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. <laughs> trying, trying to fight for words here. Okay, silence is golden, but when you see something like this, the babble kicks in. We are going to go around and have a closer look at the blooms, seeing as we have some invasive kind of, you know, chain there, which is much needed because this orchid is very heavy. It is the Stanhopia acidensis, showing off its gorgeous and somewhat aggressive, vicious looking blooms. I don't know, alien? <laughs> But when I went around and did the B-roll footage, it was one of the easiest orchids to film at night. And I'm very, very grateful for that because you can really see the details so well. Nothing is being washed out. It's as if I'm looking at them during the day. There is no mega reflection that's taking away from any of the beautiful structure and the texture of everything that happens around the column and the lip. It is literally a predator kind of structure, like two teeth holding that lip in and that glossy sheen that you see. When you touch that, it has a silky, almost like a wet feel to it, like some plastic, and it feels weird to the touch. I know it now because I have touched it a lot and also last year, but if you touch it for the first time, it's like, oh, it feels a little bit yucky, like you're touching a cold squid, but it's not that slimy. It's just super soft. Absolutely incredible. 
So even the textures at night are coming through. And we are going to be inspecting the tonsils because getting in deep with the camera into the throat, this orchid makes sense out of the word throat of the lip because dang, can you get in there? And it stays completely focused. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Now, during the day, she is super fragrant. I have to say that I do love my cinnamon fragrance. It doesn't matter in what combination. You put it into a hot curry, I will love it. You put it into a dessert, I will devour it. <laughs> However, at night, she is not fragrant. But because of how intense her fragrance is during the day, it feels as though the whole patio, the walls, have absorbed that fragrance and are now exuding it on top of everything else. I don't know at which point in time we are going to be into checking the tonsils in the throat of this orchid, but once we get there or if we have gotten there, it's just mind-blowing and I would recommend you pause the screen <laughs> or take a screenshot, do something, because this footage, oh, it's incredible. The first time I saw these blooms last year, I was like, take a step back, take a deep breath and faint. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> Just incredible. It is a shame, a real shame, that she's only around for a very, very limited time. Three days of perfection and then a very, very quick decline. You think you can get four days out of the blooms, but something starts to happen in the structure that doesn't make them look as pristine anymore. But, oh my goodness, <laughs> you're working. I counted. You're growing an orchid for 11 months, three weeks <laughs> to enjoy blooms that last three days. And then there's a little bit of something lingering around for another two days four days, which gives you a week. Yep, and that's it. Welcome to Stanhopia acidensis. But ah, is it ever worth it? <laughs> I love it. And if this midnight snack was satisfactory, also let me know in the comments if it hit that spot before bedtime. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye.